with Google Ads, like you had said earlier, patience is key, whether it comes to just launching strategies, whether it comes to waiting for results, whether it comes to optimizing, you really cannot game the system like you might be able to with Meta Ads or TikTok, where within a day, you know, something's working and you can do changes based on that. Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we discuss strategies to master Google ads for your e-commerce store. Joining me on the show is Srika Nase, founder at yorumarketing.com. You have to remain patient and you have to optimize things and do things with Google ads based on a set schedule. So let's dive right into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about Google ads. Now, obviously that's a huge topic, but we want to find out how you can master Google ads and dive really deep into this. For the topic, I have an expert with me as always. Today it's Srika Nasa. He's the CEO and co-founder from Euromarketing.com. Sri is a Google Ads fanatic who has been in the space for more than seven years. Um, he found initially Google Ads success with his own e-commerce uh, e-commerce brand back in 2017. And since then, he has been able to help over, over 500 brands scale consistently levels with Google Ads. He's also a YouTuber on everything e-com and Google Ads related. So perfect person to speak to. Let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Sri. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. Google Ads is around for ages. I'm... I don't know. I've worked with Google Ads for the last 20 something years. What inspired you to focus on Google Ads, ads specifically when it, when you see many brands gravitating towards more like meta ads and other things? Yeah. So my Google Ads journey is actually a very funny story. It started back in 2017 with my own e-commerce brand that during that time, there was very few resources available out there in terms of Google Ads, Facebook Ads even. And when I started, I was in high school. I had no other things to do besides just invest my time. I didn't have much money during that time. So what I did is I just started by focusing on free traffic, focusing on just getting my foot in the door by just playing around with Shopify, playing around with creating websites. And that eventually got me into Facebook ads because I quickly realized during that time that just relying on free traffic, it's not going to cut it. I was getting zero sales right. and it took me about two years to even get my first sale. Um, but essentially in 2017, 2018, I was like, I want to make this work. I'm going to invest some money, which I had earned during that time, selling stuff from my garage and on eBay. That's how I made my initial $2,000. Took me out about one full year to save up that $2,000, which I just blew in Facebook ads. Because during the first month or two, it really didn't work out. I was just, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't invest in any type of help because I had a lot of ego during that time. I thought I could do it all. You know, as most 17, 18 year olds think during their time, but essentially doing one thing after another, it was towards the later portion of 2017, early 2018 during Q4, which is surprisingly when I got my first sale. And that was because I was running an e-commerce brand in the fashion accessories niche, specifically targeting couples. So this was like the perfect time for a couple niche to really start going. But essentially I started with Facebook ads during that time, started doing about $100,000 two months in. As an 18-year-old, that was a lot for me. But February comes around, March comes around, Valentine's Day is over. And that's when my sales come to a crumbling stop. You know, basically going from $100,000, $200,000 a month, $30,000 profit a month, all the way down to basically $0, nothing. So that during that time, obviously, that took a little bit of a toll on me. But I also realized that Facebook ads was just not going to cut it because Facebook was becoming very erratic during that time. That's around also the time when the suspension started to happen on Facebook, ad account suspensions, this and that. So at that time, I just wanted to build a real business because during that time, even nowadays, a lot of brands, what they feel like is they're not building a real business. They're just building a Facebook ads business. So I wanted to really get away from that. And that's what got me into Google ads. And ever since then, I've just been fully focused on Google because it's not that Google is a perfect platform. However, it's much more consistent. It makes you feel like you own your business instead of just part of a platform, essentially. Yeah, I think a lot of listeners can relate to your story. Facebook ads 2017, that was the golden time. It was easy. You just threw some money in, you get all the, got all the data you needed and things were just going through. But also you're right, a lot of people lost a lot of money because it's a learning curve. Now, Google ads is around for, I don't know, 20 something plus years. So it's probably the most stable, the most mature platform out there. But also there's a, a steep learning curve there. What are some common misconceptions about Google ads that you encounter when working with new clients? 
Some of the biggest misconceptions most e-commerce brand owners believe with Google Ads is, number one, it's not scalable. They think that because there's search volumes associated with it, that they have to target specific keywords. And if on the keyword planner tool, for example, it says 5,000, then they cannot reach more people than that. This is a very big misconception and it really leaves a lot of money on the table because the approach most of, most of these brands and these brand owners take is going very narrow, going after a very specific audience. You don't necessarily want to do that with Google Ads because the Google Ads algorithm, like you said yourself, has been around for 20 plus years. It has billions and billions of dollars worth of data. It doesn't need you to go narrow and just tell it exactly what to do. It can figure these things out on its own. So one of the biz biggest misconceptions is that it's basically not scalable, when in reality, the strategy that you're using is probably what's not scalable. One of the best strategies we have been using recently has been to go broad, go very broad within your niche. So for example, if you're selling baby diapers, you don't need to specifically talk about the model number or the brand that it's from or et cetera, things like those which are too narrow. You can literally go after keywords like baby diaper and then let the algorithm narrow down your perfect audience for you. And this is where if you put in the effort to make sure your product feed, which is essentially what users see on the front end, meaning your product images, product titles, descriptions, prices, et cetera. When you put in effort into all of these things, when you make sure the quality is high for these things, that's when you don't have to bid as high. You don't have to worry about these kinds of misconceptions. But that's one of the most mm -hmm. common ones that comes to mind. You already mentioned Google Shopping campaigns, and I think for our listeners who are running DTC business, Shopify stores, there is two main pillars within Google that are really interesting for them. So that's performance max and it's shopping campaigns. Can you tell me what the differences are between these two? So shopping campaigns, essentially, it's what you see at the very top when you do a specific search for any type of product. If you say buy something, for example, buy baby diaper, the little boxes that come up are Google basically shopping placements and shopping from shopping campaigns. Performance Max is like a whole kind of broad spectrum of a campaign where shopping is part of it, essentially. Shopping is part of a Performance Max campaign. It's like a placement, essentially. But there's different ways to do shopping campaigns. You could do standard shopping campaigns, for example. You could run shopping placements via Performance Max. Back in the day, there was something called Smart Shopping Commits, which was only focused on the shopping placements. And I believe that's where a lot of brands really succeeded the most. That's why they are kind of more just accustomed to running shopping placements only because Smart Shopping was just so powerful. But Performance Max and Shopping, they're not different. It's one is part of the other, essentially. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to Google Ads, um... It's a massive tool. There's, uh, I don't know how many features are in there. So there's a bit of a learning curve. But when you approach creating Google Ads, what's, what's your kind of strategy that works between different niches or industries? Is there anything that you basically say, these are the basics that you need to put in to get started? Yeah, that's a great question. Often a lot of e-commerce brands that owners I speak with also have that same question. And I always tell them the same thing. Every brand is different. Even the brands in the same exact niche, if you find one baby niche brand and another baby niche brand, if I implement the same strategy on both, there's a chance one brand might fail completely with that same strategy. Even though it's the same audience, same products, almost same everything, right? And this is because Google Ads is a very custom platform. It reaches different pockets of the audience for every brand that essentially is there on Google. But... In reality, if you take a very systematic approach for Google Ads, which is what we normally do, then you can find one specific strategy which works across multiple industries, multiple different niches, etc. And this is something I personally implemented and created myself. This is called the TPS approach, essentially. This stands for testing, profitability, and scaling. Now, this is a very broad approach. It doesn't go after the nitty-gritty details like, hey, launch this performance max campaign or launch that campaign. It's rather a broad, broad strategy. And Essentially, what this means is testing the T part of the TPS. T is where you are focused on just testing products, whether you do it with shopping, search, display, demand gen, YouTube, that's, that's basically not really that important. What you need to focus on is having a set of campaigns, ideally shopping campaigns or performance mags, which are focused on testing your products. This means not being too heavy with restrictions. I know a lot of e-commerce brand owners, they have these very crazy restrictions, like they need a 5X ROAS to be profitable, or they need that. 
that's great. That's great for your business. However, if you just, without any previous data, tell the Google Ads algorithm to achieve these things, it's going to go crazy. It's not going to be able to achieve those numbers because Google algorithm works from previous data. So the testing part of things is where you're letting the algorithm free. You're letting the algorithm test your products and literally tell you what row asset can achieve you, what cost per customer acquisition it can achieve you. And then from there, you move on to the P part of the TPS strategy, which is profitability. This is where you are essentially implementing a different set of campaign types. Again, it could be shopping, performance max, that's regardless of whatever you do, make sure that these campaign strategies are both focused on profitability, meaning now is when you start adding those restrictions in. If you notice a certain baby diaper is running at a 3x ROAS within your testing strategy, then now you can add in a 300% target ROAS or whatever target CPA you want to add. And then let these campaigns focus on profitability. You don't want to mix up the profitable products with the ones getting tested because the ones getting tested, you'll probably have some bad apples in there and you don't want to mix up the boat, right? But finally, that brings us to the S part of things, which is scaling. This is where now you take products that are from testing phase, from profitability phase, and now you only focus on scaling those that are doing well. Again, you don't want to mix up these good products with the bad ones. I see, I audit so many brands regularly under my agency where these brands, they have just a mixture of different products. One product is worth $1,000, one product is worth $10, one product is clearly a winner and another product is clearly losing their money, but it's all in the same campaign. You cannot expect the algorithm to get you decent results, get you profitable results. If you just jumble up all these products and if you just throw everything in and say like, hey, Google, go out and find something that works. It's not going to do anything for you, right? So the TPS approach separates out these products in different phases of their life, as I like to call it. And this approach will work regardless of what niche or industry you're in, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you need still to have some um, manual or human oversight um, beside of all the AI that is out there to really find the winners and then scale them. Now, when we're talking about ad platforms, um, what's your take on retargeting or being on different platforms to just be omnipresent and bring people back to your shopping cart? I believe every platform is connected in a way. And that's because if you run meta ads, Facebook ads, if you run TikTok ads, Pinterest ads, doesn't matter what it is, Google ads itself, just this platform alone, can retarget all of these people because users regularly who go on Facebook, who go on TikTok, they're not there to buy products. They're, they're just there to scroll their feed. Your product ad just happens to be on the feed, which is what intrudes them to click on your ad, to interact with them, et cetera. But because they're not in the buying intent, they're just in the scrolling intent, they wanted to see some funny cat videos or whatever it might be, they are not, there's a good chance they're not going to buy right away. You're going to lose a lot of the people that come through your website. That's why the conversion rates are 1% to 2% on average on Facebook. Now, it might be higher depending on your niche, but that's just the average. Google Ads, once somebody sees your ad on Facebook, they see the baby diaper and they want it, but not now. Later on, when they want to buy the product, they're going to potentially go on Google, type in baby diaper, or they're going to type in your brand name. And that's where retargeting happens on Google. So Google Ads is essentially connecting all of these platforms together. It's making sure that you are appearing multiple times, no matter where they search up for your products. And it's the same is true for Facebook ads retargeting or TikTok ads retargeting, wherever else you do this. With Google Ads, you're going to get a lot of people who come through, but they're not going to buy from you. And then later on, maybe they're on Facebook, they're doing something, having fun, whatever it is, then they see your Facebook retargeting ad over there. And then that's what makes them remember that, hey, I saw this ad on Google, I need to probably buy this product right now. So it's all connected together. It's like a whole ecosystem. You cannot have one part and be missing another. All of these need to be connected like in a little circular loop, essentially. If you have one part of the loop that's missing, well, now you don't have a whole circle and it's missing parts of it. So you need to connect this loop by being everywhere, omnipresent, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a holistic approach that's like be on every platform or keep every platform within your reach and um, try to catch people to bring them back to, to Google. Now, we are in August right now, so um, people should actually preparing now for Q4 if they don't already have. Um, when you said that um, you go through these different stages um, to reach the scale level, what's the timing? When should people start really getting set up if they haven't done yet already? 
for Q4, you should already start right now today. If you haven't started yet, I would even say you're a little bit late to the party. And that's because Q4, you don't want to be, especially with Google Ads, because Google Ads is a platform that's search-based, meaning it takes more time to really prime up for the searches happening, for all of the changes happening, et cetera. So with Google Ads, the earlier you start, the better. And there's a lot of things you could be doing, such as setting up promos within the Google Merchant Center, specifically designed for Q4. There could be things such as adding reviews in, adding certain things within your landing pages to improve conversion rates, FOMO, scarcity. All these things are going to be what's work, working for Q4, essentially. And it's the same for your products. You don't have to do anything crazy with Google Ads for your products for Q4. But it could be as simple as maybe looking into starting specific campaigns geared towards your best sellers. And from now, you want to start by slowly increasing the budgets, ramping up for your best sellers over time until basically September occurs. Because you don't want to be in a situation where in September and you're now just starting a best selling campaign or, or your best selling products, essentially. Because then from that point on, it's going to take 14 days, 30 days to scale that up. And you'll already be in October, November, December, when, depending on when you start, essentially. So the earlier you start with Google, the better, because the algorithm needs time to optimize for these new searches that start happening during late August and early September. Mm -hmm. Now, you're running a Google Ads agency, you're an expert in that field. What's your um, process or approach when somebody comes to you, and probably they already have an ads account, um, to get them scaled? What's, what's the first step? The first and most important step is to understand where the leaks in the foundation are. Because with Google Ads, if you have a weak foundation, it doesn't matter if I come in, it doesn't matter if some other expert comes into your Google Ads account, nobody's gonna be able to help you, period. It's because Google Ads is a platform that works off of your foundation. The stronger your foundation, the easier it is to scale. When I say foundation, I'm talking about things like conversion tracking. I'm talking about things like how your Google Ads account structure is. Does it have a lot of policy violations because of the products you sell? Does it have the right kind of campaign setup from the store? Or did you just launch some random campaigns and now the account is filled up with a lot of random data and a lot of bad quality data? All these things are the first step I look into because something I do is called an ad account audit where I'm trying to figure out all the problems in the accounts. I'm trying to figure out where the holes or leaks in the foundation are. And it's crazy to say, but there's brands out there that are doing $100,000 a month, a million dollars a month and beyond where they don't even have proper conversion tracking. And they're just blindly looking at the numbers on their Google Ads dashboard and blindly trusting them, which is not what you should be doing. But these foundational things, they guide the campaigns. They guide the algorithm. If you don't have proper tracking, if you don't have proper accuracy or your ad account structure is weak, that's telling the campaigns and the algorithm what quality of day, uh, what quality of traffic you actually want, and who you want to show your ads to, and if it's not high quality, well then you can't expect high quality results. So yeah. that's where my focus always begins: the foundation, figuring out the leaks, etc. From there, then I move on to the campaign strategies because campaign strategy is actually the second important part. It's not the first. A lot of brand owners believe campaign is where everything happens, like when you click a bunch of buttons, that's where the magic happens. That's where you make the most money, and that's not true. Is where the foundation is where you make the most money. But then after that, the campaign strategy, what you have launched, do you have a bunch of shopping campaigns or is it a bunch of just random products thrown together? That's what I'm looking at to understand if there's actually a structure in place similar to the TPS approach or not. And then from there, once we figure out those things, then it's a custom approach for scaling. That's where the customized approach comes in. There's no one size fits all approach there. Okay. Can you give me an example of a brand that you worked with, like a case study? You don't need to name the brand um, that came to you and what kind of results they saw. So we recently started working with a brand in the furniture niche. It's based in the UK. It's actually called Opa Living. But this specific hmm. brand was a brand which was barely doing around 40 to 50,000 pounds a month just within the UK market. They didn't want to expand, just wanted to stay within the UK. But 40 to 50,000 per month in March of this year. Now, the majority of their traffic was coming from Google Ads because furniture for their niche and just their practices, they weren't really focused on Facebook at all. They were focused on Google Ads and organic traffic. But when I looked into their ad account, what I noticed was they had a shopping campaigns running, they had search campaigns running, but there was no real strategy in place. They were setting up these arbitrary values within their settings, such as target ROAS values, target CPA values, which the brand had never really found success with before. The ad account had 
no experience, achieving this no, those numbers. So essentially, it was like blindly throwing darts and just hoping something hits. But that was their strategy. And they had just one major performance max campaign. They had one major search campaign, which was a brand search campaign, which was obviously making the most sales for them in the ad account. So what we had to do was, first of all, we had to start from the foundation up, which is what I always do. And in this situation, I did realize their conversion tracking was a complete mess. They were calculating phone calls as sales, along with actual purchases as sales, when their primary objective of their business was just conversion, sales. So we had to kind of scratch their entire foundation, start from scratch. This meant make, just basically re-optimizing the algorithm to after sales only, just going after that. And we also had to focus on a better strategy for the campaigns themselves. Now, in this situation, what we did is we knew that this brand didn't have too much time left because they had been running unprofitably for quite some time. You know, 40,000 pounds per month with you know all these expenses in the furniture niche specifically, it adds up very quickly. They were barely at 5% net margins, which is not enough at all. So we had to make something work very fast. Otherwise, this brand was on the verge of bankruptcy. They were going to close the brand down completely. So what we had to do was basically start by focusing on the best sellers. And this brand had been active for roughly two to three years. So we did have some data to work off of. All we did was go into the back end, figure out what was actually working. And we figured out a specific collection of products, which had always done well over these two to three years for this brand. So Instead of just going in, applying random campaigns, spending a ton of money, we just decided to take a very simple approach. We just focus on the best sellers only, the best selling collection. That's all we did. We scrapped their original performance max campaign. We launched a new one, focusing on shopping only because in furniture, the products themselves cost tons of money, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 pounds and above. We don't want to waste that money going after display traffic with things like assets within the asset group section. So... We focused on shopping only, we focused on the collection only. And as of right now, four months later, this brand has achieved roughly 193,000 pounds in revenue just this month alone, which is more than what they were doing in three to four months combined of revenue just four months ago, five months ago. So this brand is extremely profitable now. They're doing multi six figures. It's one of the most profitable months for this brand as well. And this is mostly because of the Google ad side of things, because we were able to restructure this account with a very simple approach, only focus on what's working. And now that something's working, now we can apply more of the TPS approach, test more things out because we now actually have a budget to do those things. You don't want to be doing these things when you don't even have a budget or when you're on the verge of bankruptcy. No, absolutely. And I think that a lot of listeners can relate to that, that um, if you come to Google Ads, you might be overwhelmed and then you just start throwing spaghetti against the wall and try to figure out what sticks. And that's probably not the right approach. For our listeners, can you provide three actionable tips that they in, in, can implement today to increase their performance? Number one tip, go inside your ad accounts, go inside your ad strategy, look at what products are not working and take them out and give them their own approach. You want to apply an approach, a strategy for all the underperforming products. I can't tell you how many times I've had ad accounts and brands where we just took those underperforming products, give them their own approach, maybe with high restrictions, and they just suddenly overnight start selling. So what you want to understand is sometimes it's not that the product sucks. It's not that the product is not going to be a winning product. It's mostly that the season might be wrong, or maybe the bid you set within your campaign is just not ideal for that product. You don't want to just disregard these products. You want to give them a second chance. Sometimes we even give them third chances with a third approach in terms of performance max or smart bidding campaigns in general. But never just discard these underperforming products. That's one of the biggest things I've learned in 2024. Second tip, I would say, go light on your restrictions. Don't go too heavy with the restrictions just because you have some big numbers to hit, some big profitability goals. That's great for your internal business, but that's not great for Google Ads, especially if it has not achieved these things before. You need to always work with the data. You need to get the algorithm on your side. You cannot get the algorithm on your side if you're giving the, the algorithm arbitrary numbers to go after, which are essentially random in the algorithm's eyes. You want it to work with things which it has achieved before already and which it has success with already. Third biggest tip I would say, Focus more on the broad level approach rather than the nitty gritty details. I spent a lot of the last four, five, six years fussing over, should I launch this kind of campaign type? Should I do this bit? Should I do that budget? 
reality is if you have a strong foundation, if you have a good ad strategy that's on a broad approach that goes maybe at like after TPS or maybe it's after segregation of your products based on similarities, I guarantee you, it doesn't matter what your bid is, doesn't matter how nitty gritty you went or didn't go, there's a chance that it will show some kind of positive results. And then from there, you should be going into the nitty gritty details, focusing on the specifics. A lot of brand owners, what they do is they go right from the start into the nitty gritty. They go too crazy with the bids, budgets. They have, want to make everything perfect. And, you know, as a e-commerce brand owner myself, I understand you don't want to, you know, you want to be as efficient as possible with your budget, with your money. You want to grow your brand as much as possible. But this actually counterintuitively makes it worse for your brand. It actually makes it so you don't end up getting results fast enough because you're not letting the algorithm go free and figure out things on its own, which you can then later tell it what to do and what not to do. So focus on the broad level approach, broad level strategy. Forget the nitty gritty details. Even if you're already scaling right now, just focus on the broad approach, focus on the direction you want to go instead of just fussing over the smaller parts of the strategy and the approaches essentially. Yeah, so patience is key there. Now you're working with a lot of different brands out there, but who's your perfect customer? My perfect customer is anybody that sells legal products on Google Ads, nothing illegal, nothing against the policies, and a brand that does over a million dollars a year in revenue in total or with Google Ads. If those if those no metrics are met, essentially we can help you scale even further to multi-seven figures with Google Ads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question, and we already touched on this a little bit. Walk me through the typical onboarding process for a new client. What kind of steps are involved? How long does it usually take you to get them up and running? So the first step of working together is, of course, the account audit. That's the first step. But after that, if we think we are a good fit for each other, that's when we start by getting access to the back end, everything. Google Ads account, Merchant Center, all of those important things which are Google Ads related. And from there, our real work begins, which is essentially starting work from the foundation of the product feed up, the ground up essentially, which takes about seven days. So seven to 10 days is when we're working on rebuilding that foundation if it needs to be rebuilt or making it stronger if it's already good enough. And this phase, super important. I always get asked all the time, why don't we just run into the campaigns? Why, don't, why are we wasting time with the foundational stuff and you know stuff that's not going to make us money? The reality is, and I always tell them this, you make money with your foundation. I could skip this stuff right now, but I don't want you to blame me later on when you're not getting any results, when you're barely you're struggling to scrape by. So it's very important to start from the foundation of make it strong enough, which is what we do in these first seven to 10 days. Once this is over, we don't really need to come back to this anymore because now we have a, such a solid, strong foundation that now we can build on top of it, launch more campaigns. And that's what we do in the second step after seven to 10 days. We're focusing on launching new campaigns, we're focusing on revamping the old ones. The last thing we want to do is come in and shut everything off. I've seen that happen so many times where brands are doing okay. They're doing a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars a day. Some agency comes in and because they want to implement their own approach, they shut everything off. It literally takes the brand from ten thousand a day to zero dollars a day, which is very, very horrific, essentially. We never do that. We want to build on top of what's already working. So that's the second step. And then from there, basically, that's the customized approach. That's when things begin is at that point when we start working on the campaigns, optimizing them as needed, and then scaling based on the results. I do think majority of the brands take about two to four weeks, maybe even six weeks to really start gaining some momentum with the strategies we implement. But it's a step-by-step -step process. Usually the onboarding itself just takes about a day just getting access, but then after that, everything is custom. Okay, no, that makes perfect sense. Now, if you're looking to get up and ready for Q4, then you need to start today or better yesterday. Tell me a little bit about your pricing structure. How does that work? So we offer two kinds of different services, actually. Both are Google Ads only. That's all we do. We want to be the best at Google Ads, nothing else, not a jack of all trades, master of one. But what we do is first thing, if your brand is not doing a million dollars a year, let's say it's on the verge or it's a little bit less, or you're just getting started on Google Ads, and but your brand is a million dollars or above. We offer something called a one-time setup, which is a one-time fee itself. It's cost 3,500 USD. But this fee itself, it's a one-time fee. It's designed to basically get you enough results within a month to a month and a half, get you enough results, get you enough consistency, where it makes sense for you to even work with an agency on a monthly basis. There's a lot of agencies out there that will want to charge you a monthly fee right off the bat. 
I personally don't think that's a good idea, especially if you're not getting any good results from Google Ads or you're struggling with Google. So that's the one-time setup for those kinds of brands. It's a one-time fee, but usually lasts a month to a month and a half. Second is the monthly ongoing work where we actually work with you right off the bat on a month-to-month -month basis. This itself starts around $2,850 USD plus a very small percentage of the ad spend, not revenue, ad spend, which we only take if we're hitting certain goals we create together. So normally we create three month goals with these brands, six month goals and 12 month goals. And based on these goals, we take a very small percentage of ad spend. We usually, if you're spending between a thousand to 10,000, we take 7%, 10,000 to 25,000, 5% of ad spend, 25 to 50, 3% and 50 and above, only one and a half percent, but only if we're making you money and we're hitting these goals we set together. Otherwise we don't charge ad spend percentages, only 2,850 USD. That's kind of where mm -hmm. it starts. Okay, that sounds like a very fair, fair deal there. So while our coffee break comes to an end today, Shri, is there anything you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? With Google Ads, like you had said earlier, patience is key, whether it comes to just launching strategies, whether it comes to waiting for results, whether it comes to optimizing, you really cannot game the system like you might be able to with Meta Ads or TikTok, where within a day, you know, if something's working and you can do changes based on that. As entrepreneurs in general, everybody wants to take action quickly. But the thing is, that works against you with Google Ads. You have to take that into account. You have to remain patient. And you have to optimize things and do things with Google Ads based on a set schedule. Now, for me personally, doing things every four to seven days, 14 days, depending on the daily budget, has worked for these past five to six years, regardless of what industry I've worked in and regardless of what niche of brand I've worked with, this has remained true to this day, no matter how much Google Ads has updated. So stick to the fundamentals, stick to being patient, and it's not, it might not be easy, but it's going to work in the long run. That's what I will say. Mm -hmm. No, very true. Um, patience is probably not the strongest part of being entrepreneur, an entrepreneur or a marketing guy. Um, but as you said, it pays off and have someone on your side like you guys helps with that. Where can people go to learn more about you guys? You can go on my website, yoromarketing.com. It's Y-O-R-U marketing.com. You can also find me on YouTube. I'm a YouTuber on Shopify e-commerce or Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm basically everywhere. But Euro Marketing is my main website. Cool. I would put the links in the show notes and you're just one click away. Three, thanks so much. That thing was a, a masterclass on Google Ads and what you need to do to be successful on that platform. And I hope a lot of people will reach out to you and get their account cleaned up and scale. Thanks so much. Thank you.